Welcome back. One of the nation's largest supermarket chains going to war with Visa. Grocery market giant Kroger announcing a ban on Visa cards at 27 locations in the state of California. $90 billion in annual swipe fees at the center of this battle. Joining us now, the author of the upcoming book, Everyday Millionaires, Ramsey Solutions financial expert, Chris Hogan. Chris, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. Why the war with Visa? What's the impact to the consumer? Well, whenever they're charging these types of fees, you know, the retailer has no other option but to pass those costs on to consumers. And so really, this is a battle. This is a financial battle to try to figure out, can Visa drop their fees? Uh, will Kroger accept? And so ultimately, the consumer is the one that is at risk here of paying higher costs for groceries or potentially lower costs if they win this battle. Hey, Chris, it's Lindsay Bell here. It sounds to me like this is uh, a win for potentially uh, PayPal and Venmo and those other online payment uh, methods. But is this really just the retailers kind of fighting back at these payment services companies? And where do we go from here? Well, I do. I think so. I, I definitely think the other cashless systems have an opportunity here to gain some market share. But you're correct. This is a battle between the merchant of Visa as well as the, the retailer, Kroger. Hopefully, though, something will be done and the cost savings will get passed on to customers. We all know food is a requirement. People are going to buy groceries. But also, you all, this is an area that people tend to overspend. Uh, food. They go in and you can shop there and there's all kinds of stuff. I want to encourage people to get on a grocery budget, go in with a list, and only buy the things on the list. That way you stay true to your budget and you stay focused on your finances. Well, Chris, that, it's Dagan McDowell. That means it's shopping online, too. That that's one very easy way to control uh, what you're buying is because your list is right there in front of you. And that increasingly is becoming uh, an option for Americans. It is. Dagan, you're right. Shopping online can definitely be convenient. But I think you can do just as much damage online as you could in the store if you don't have a plan. So I still want people to get intentional and really start to look and think, what food items do we need? I'm going to shop based on need, not just want. So you need to be careful. We can rationalize overspending at the grocery store and really overspend a lot each and every month. There are other perks, though, that come with the plastic, right? I mean, how is Kroger going to get around that, the fact that you do get other perks when you use that card? Well, I mean, and this is an area that I battle against all the time. People will tell me, well, Chris, I use my credit card points for airline miles or I get hotel rooms, and I really want people to do the math. When you start to look at this and understand that interest that you pay is a penalty, you're not really getting a perk. It's more of an advertisement. It's a marketing ploy to make you think that you're getting an advantage when actually you're making them money. So I tell people, use your debit card or use cash. Don't fall for the trap with a credit card. Yeah, I always thought when you use a debit card for groceries, then that's opening you up to risk. But you think you should use a debit card? Most definitely. As a former banker, your debit card that's attached to your checking account, okay. it's protected. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're okay to go in there and to use your debit card or to use your pen. It's totally fine because with a debit card, it's coming from money in your checking account. Right. With a credit card, you're using someone else's money, so they're charging you interest. A new study from NerdWallet finds that the uh, Americans on average have parked $32,000 in cash in low interest savings accounts. So how much money could they potentially be losing by having all that money in cash? I'm actually part of that. It's just <laughs> too much well, money in cash at these low interest rates, right? <laughs> It really is. I mean, they're potentially losing tens of thousands of dollars in compound interest. And Maria, again, it's okay to have some money saved. Uh, that's what I call an emergency fund. And you want to have three to six months of expenses parked in a money market account, not a savings account. Money market accounts are going to give you a better rate of return. But to leave a large sum of money there that could be invested and growing for you, just sitting there, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're missing out on tens of thousands of dollars. Hmm. I see you having like cash buried in family members' yards, even, <laughs> just in case. I'm a big by, the way, by the way, you have to be careful about burying cash because it's paper and it, <laughs> it degrades. So if you're going to hoard <laughs> assets, Do it under the diamonds, even, you know, <laughs> anything then that, then that then is then a story about Are you talking value. about me having money buried or Maria? I Maria. Did. She, yeah, she knows I'm a okay, big Maria. Okay, good. Good. She's good. a saver, good. too, I just want to be sure yeah. I got this right. So you're saying three to six months of cash is okay. So... It, so it's not a terrible thing to have some cash. You want to have some buffer if there's an emergency, But not right? big, big amounts. 
That is correct. Three to six months of expenses on average will give you a cushion if there's an illness, a job loss, uh, any kind of major thing going on. It won't cause you to go back into debt. So definitely have three to six months of expenses parked in a money market account. It'll make you feel peace in areas you didn't know were stressed. But I only want people to do that after they attack debt and get themselves free of that. All right, Chris. Always great advice from you. Thanks so much. Thank you for having Chris me. Chris Hogan.